Hey, what's going on, dude? Stax is here, and welcome back to my NHL 18 franchise mode with the Vancouver Canucks. I just recently got back from my camp job, so I'm gonna be uploading for a couple weeks here. I hope to get a lot of uploads done. That's the plan for these next couple weeks before I go back to my camp job there. And I also noticed this the series is getting fairly popular. I mean, not many comments, so if you happen to stop by don't forget to leave a comment leave a like it really helps me out but uh without further ado let's get right into this now that i am back to uploading again so in the last upload i managed to pull off a huge trade although i had to give up quite a bit for it i managed to get a player who is from vancouver well he was he was from the vancouver giants originally and so he doesn't have to move anywhere pretty much his name is Lucas Denny he is a franchise sentiment and I plan to turn him into that franchise player of this uh, Vancouver Canucks team here but uh, anyways we're gonna jump into the contracts right here let's give him a little check this is where we left off pretty much we have the Sedins who still want to play another year the one of them is still top six potential but I feel like that's going to switch up as soon as it gets to next year there they're still considered second line forwards but I also feel like that might switch up as soon as we get to the the third year of simulation here so we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the contracts and we have 22 million in cap space I did send Ben Hutton a qualifying offer I don't know if I want to keep him he is definitely going to be a, a solid top four defenseman but offensively I feel like he can definitely work on his offense awareness definitely I mean it's only 79 uh, it could be due to morale issue but look he looks pretty happy in my opinion and then here's Lucas Denny the franchise sentiment that we're going to be working on for the for the remainder of this series pretty much yeah, so when it comes to my center depth, we got Bo Horvat, we got Elias Pettersson, and then we got Lucas Denny. I honestly don't see a position for Henrik Sedin on this team anymore at the moment. I do feel like it's time for them to retire, but in this simulation, they don't seem to want to retire, it looks like. And then we also have Granlin and Surtur. So we definitely want to get rid of one of these guys. I'm looking at Sutter and I'm thinking, should I buy out his contract? He has two more years. But at two more years at four million, I feel like he's practically tradable at this moment. We could trade him away. That would free up a lot more cap space there. And then we also want to figure out who's going to be on the left side of Lucas Denny there. Now... We can definitely work on getting a first line forward and putting Sven Berchi down on the, the second line there. He didn't do exactly as good as he did the year before. He had 71 points, and then this year he had 64 points, which isn't bad. But, I mean, I I don't feel like he's that first line forward that we're going to be using for this. Oh, no, I got, a, I got a lot to think about here. We're definitely going to be keeping Brock Besser... Godobin, I think he'll stay on that third line, while Jake Vertanen will stay on that fourth line also. We can get rid of Samuelson. He is almost in his prime, and he hasn't even hit the NHL yet. So that's an option right there. And then we can work on Matthias from here. Put him on that first line pairing and see if he can grow. Colin is another character that we could start growing. Giving him some extra ice time down in the AHL. Petrus Palmu, I'm going to give him a contract. I mean, he's 21 years old. Why not? Three years. Sure. We'll give him a contract. Defensively, we got Chris Tanev, Ben Hutton, Suster. I don't know about keeping him, especially after this year. Minus 11. Um, 10 points. I just, I just don't see a need for him on this team at the moment Lindell I want to continue to try to grow Lindell Stetcher he's a really good prospect he has really good defense 
I feel like he'll be a, a solid top six defensive pairing defenseman. I don't know how to put that one. Good Branson, who has a four million dollar contract. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. The contracts on this team are absolutely ridiculous. Especially that contract. I mean, he's not. He's not exactly a top four defenseman, but he's getting paid like one. So, let's see. I think we're going to be trading Essa Lindell. I know we traded for this character right here, but I don't know. Let's see. 87 defense. In my opinion, he's better than Ben Hutton. In my opinion. Especially defensively. Alright, dude. So, the decision is pretty simple. They both want $3 million each. And they're both... Still very good. They're still very good. Honestly, they're considered second line forwards at the moment. Although next season they might be considered third line forwards. I don't think I'll be using them up in the top pairings. They'll probably be used on the fourth line or something. But we have the cap space. I I say might as well bring them back for one more year. They both want one more year, and they they both do want this extension. So. We are going to do that. We're going to give them the exact same contract. So 3.3 mil. And then we're also going to give him. I know he only wants 3 million. But we're going to try to make this seem realistic. If they were to come back, they probably want the same exact amount when it comes to pay. So we're going to give them a similar contract. All these other contracts are tendered at the moment so we're going to keep it like that Michael Shepard I don't see him coming back we're going to go ahead and we're going to release him goodbye I am so sorry about that Alex Biega he lost one of his buddies 25 years old 70 overall I don't see a purpose for bringing him back 23 years old um I don't know about that one either there's Gunnarsson who's 22 years old he doesn't look like he's going to turn into anything spectacular or anything like that. So, I'm going to let him be. Fejemo? Fejemo? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see any other contracts that interest me at the moment. Suster, I think we'll be letting him go. And we'll keep those other contracts tendered at the moment. I just need to look at my center depth quickly. Kind of curious on Popovich if he can get some ice time in here because he has a low top six potential. He could turn into something fairly decent. And he is from Vancouver Giants, so basically a hometown kid. That would be pretty cool if we can turn him into something here. So we have Goddad who will take the fourth line. That's a given. Dallin, I want him to be the top sentiment in the AHL there and that way he can he can really start growing there he has medium top six castles he's a qualified tendered contract at the moment okay he can do third line pairing in the, the AHL Masterson and then yeah I'm gonna give pop which an offer I'm going to put him on that fourth line or something like that. Defenseman. Suster will keep him there. I mean, we won't give him an offer. I mean, we'll keep his contract as an unrestricted free agent and let him get picked up by some other team, I guess. Goalie-wise, Demko. I think Demko next year will probably be ready for the starter role, so we don't have to do work on any like of our goaltenders at the moment. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to be making some trades in a bit here. I do want to get rid of Louis Erickson if I can get rid of him. And then I also want to get rid of a couple of our sentiment. Granlin and Sutter will probably be gone. Let's send him to free agency. See if... Uh... So Henrik... <laughs> Accepted, but for some reason Daniel didn't accept. That's really weird. He does want to. 
He does want an extension. I don't get why he doesn't want a case. So we're going to give him a little more than Henrik, I guess. I mean, that, that seems so unrealistic that I have to give him more. But hey, it is what it is, I guess. There you go. Daniel's back for yet another year with the Vancouver Canucks. Cool, those guys accepted the offer. Let's advance another day. Do I gotta do anything there? No, I don't think so. I think our trade block is pretty decent. So when it comes to free agency, this is what they have to offer. Oh my goodness. Matthews, restricted free agent. They, I don't see any point in us going after Matthews there. Max Pacioretty. Wow. This is crazy. How much does he want? He wants seven million. We can definitely get Max Pacioretty. Poliarvi. He's a restricted free agent at the moment. We definitely need a top lefty. Would Gardner be a good choice? I feel like Gardner would be a good choice. And then Pacioretty. There's also Vanek. Nah, I don't want Vanek. No, we're definitely going to go after Patch Ready here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a quick trade. Let's make a quick trade here and get rid of one of our lefties here. Let's go over here. Go like this. So we got Berchi, Sedin, Erickson, Boucher. I feel like Boucher would be put on the third line there unless Daniel Sedin wants to be on that third line I know Daniel would do better on that third line but I don't want to ruin Boucher's growth there he looks like he can become a, a solid third line sniper for us Leipzig fourth liner hmm I don't know you guys um Maybe I should have bought out this contract, but Boston wants Louis Erickson back. Okay. Okay, EA Sports. Edmonton needs a lefty. Minnesota can probably take this contract here. Jordan Greenway, top nine power forward. This guy can turn into something good, actually. Wow, I'm looking at this guy. I'm thinking... Yeah, this guy can be a good player if I trade for him. Let's see if he's... Will this work? Wow, this actually... Did that actually work? That was a crazy trade. That actually worked. Okay, then. Okay, so Brock Besser. I feel like if he was playing with Max Pacioretty, he'd definitely be a having an amazing year, a career year, I feel like, at least. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna offer Max Patry a pretty big contract. He's, he wants to go until he's 37. What if I take him until, for four years, until he's 34, or maybe even three years, and let's offer him an eight million $850 contract. Does that work? And then let's see if we can also get Gardner into here for four years. So that would take him until he's 32 and he's a solid top four defenseman. 500 and or 5 million and 875. Let's see how that works. Let's just kind of hope this goes through because it's not guaranteed to be honest. We're also going to make a quick trade. We're going to get rid of one of our sentiment, Brandon Sutter. You know who. You know who we're getting rid of. So let's go like this. And then let's go down to Brandon Sutter. And who needs a sentiment? The Arizona Coyotes. We'll trade Brandon Sutter for someone like. Let's see. 
We get like a defenseman of some sort, maybe. Maybe just a draft pick. Because we don't need any of the one like special or anything like that. Fourth round draft pick. See how that works. No, apparently I'm asking for too much. Fifth and a seventh. Let's go. There you go. So, goodbye Brandon Sutter. And hopefully, hello Max Pacioretty and Jake Gardner. Okay, so there's Gardner. There's Pacioretty. Okay, so now we are fairly stacked, I guess. Are we at least a contender now? We're hopeful. We are a hopeful. That is for sure. Defensively now. So it'd be Gardner, Tanner, Hutton. We need a righty. Hutton and Lindell. Hutton's poise is better, but like Lindell has really good defensive stats. That's kind of what kind of what I wanted—a defensive two-way defender, someone with good offensive awareness and good defensive awareness. But he only had seven points last year, whereas Hutton had seven points also, minus 11, minus six. You know what, actually, I'm going to do something crazier. Well, I'm going to sign someone first. Let's see who is a right hand defenseman that we can pick up. Because I really believe this is going to be a, the year that we, we, take a, we make a push for the playoffs there. Maybe getting Myers in here adds a bit of size to our to our defense there. And if I played him with Lindell, no. If we're gonna get someone to play with Lindell, it has to be someone offensively aware. Otherwise, we're we're not really helping Lindell out with his growth. We may have to make a trade here. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to make a trade. And if that's the case, I guess we're gonna have to make, we're gonna put Granlin into this trade for sure. Our center depth is set now with uh, Horvat, Pedersen, Sadid, and Lucas Denny. We do not need Granlin anymore. There's no purpose for him and pretty much on this team. Not that he's not a good player, but at this point we, we're pretty set center depth wise. Maybe Nicholas Waugh? Nah. No, we're definitely going to look for someone who's a right hand defenseman. We got Slavin. Wow, they got a bunch of lefties. And Hannafin also. Alexi Yemelin. He's a good defensive player right there. Oh, and I guess I gotta get rid of Good Branson somehow here. If I can get rid of him, that'd be pretty cool. Bokvis, Hughes. Let's see. Alright, dudes, I think I'll just find a trade here quickly. Alrighty, so now that we got Max Patch ready, and we've added Jake Gardner to the defensive depth that we have at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend the rest of my cap space. Might as well go all out this year and hope that we make the playoffs, especially knowing that we got Lucas Denny now, who's a part of the, the Vancouver Canucks. He came straight from the Vancouver Giants. I'm thinking of getting Jordan Ebley and then also adding Tyler Myers, some a bit of a bit of skill and a bit of size to the Vancouver Canucks. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get Jordan Ebley to a let's say about five million nine seventy five, almost six million, basically six million. And then Tyler Myers, we're gonna give him a. $5,750,000 contract and see how that works out for four years. And I think these guys are the same age, 29 years of age. So we're adding a bit of 
age chemistry also to the to the lineup here. Let's hope that they so Maya is accepted and Jordan Ebley accepted. So there you have it. We're gonna go ahead and now make a trade. We definitely don't need Marcus Granlin, and we definitely do not need. Let's see where is it, Granlin? We definitely do not need one of these lefties because we have Gardner, Tanner, Myers, and then Myers will be working with either Lindell or Hutton. And because Hutton is medium top four potential, and Lindell is probably going to stop his growth fairly soon here, I'm going to get rid of Lindell. And we're going to sign Hutton. So Lindell. Let's send him to Arizona and see if we can get a couple good draft picks here. So third round draft pick. Or a third and a fourth, I guess. No, we can get a little more than that, I think. Maybe a second. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. Let's try a team that wants both of them. So draft picks, let's try their second and see if that turns out for us. Nope. Let's send them back a fourth maybe. No, that's not working either. Calgary, nope, that's not happening. That's a rivalry trade, not gonna happen. It ain't happening. It just not it ain't it just ain't happening. Okay, we're gonna have to give up like a fourth and a fifth, I think. Let's see how this works. Well, there you go. We got a second rounder for Marcus Granlin and Essa Lindell. Now, do I have enough to get Ben Hutton into here? If not, we're gonna we're gonna have to pull some strings and try to get. Was it Good Branson? Yeah, we're gonna have to try to get Good Branson traded or something like that. Damn. Okay, we're gonna have to free up that cap space for sure. So let's try to free up some cap space. I do not want to get rid of Ben Hutton. He's not growing exactly still. Well, he, he still has a little bit of time to grow, but I don't see that happening to be honest. So let's get, a good, get rid of good Branson. He only has like a couple years on his contract anyways. Who wants him? Let's send him to Arizona for like a seventh or something. Let's see how that works. No. Let's get rid of let's see how this works. What if we send them a seventh? So it's as if we're I just want to get rid of his contract, let's be honest. No, it's not happening. Send him... Um, two sevenths? No. Screw it, 50%. They still don't want Kurt Branson. Two sevenths. And another seventh. I don't know. Okay, something has to give here. Just take my third. Oh my god. We got a second this year anyways. There you go. Good Branson is gone. And now hopefully we can actually sign Ben Hutton to that contract. Yeah, we got more than enough. Four million seven hundred yeah. Let's go ahead and sign him. Four years. Give him four years at four mil and see what happens pretty much. There's Ben Hutton. Alright dude, so we got yet another trade here that I wanna pull off. I honestly don't need Brandon Leipzig or Brandon Gons. Both of them we've attempted to grow as best as we could. But they are getting to that age where the growth does stop. So we're going to trade them. And Reed Boucher, he is a really good sniper. Although we, we do have Daniel and Henrik still. So one of them can, can take that third line pairing. And we're going to go for Tyler Benson here from 
Edmonton and he is a uh, from Vancouver Giants so yet another Vancouver born player and I, I wouldn't doubt he he possibly played with Lucas Denny I mean during the simulation but obviously I wouldn't know that but when to give this trade a go I wouldn't doubt it goes through so proposed no I guess it's not gonna go through maybe we get rid of Gaunt and then we throw in a draft pick a draft pick later down the road of course so there may be a sixth see how this works oh no okay let's see if this goes through nope not a chance how about a fifth we have a fifth next year nope that ain't happening either how about a fourth no what is going to work for this one to go through? No, I'm not giving up a third. Let's let's find a different trade. LA wants Reed Boucher for sure. So if we give up, uh, maybe if we can get a third back for these two. There you go. So Reed Boucher is gone. And this is what a left wing center depth looks like. Gaunt, he's still here. He's not happy though. We're definitely going to have Mott and Delarose down as the top liners. Which means we could add Zamenhof to our AHL depth there. Who needs, who needs a lefty? A lefty for a lefty, hey? Because we definitely need some growing players down there now. John Quinville. Let's try... How about Ryan Gropp? Nah. I don't know. This one's a tough one. Let's look at our contracts quickly and see what we have when it comes to lefties. Now I know we have Fejemo. We're going to go ahead and offer him a three year contract. Get him in here. Jet Wu. Might as well give him a contract. Sure. How much do we have? 1,400,000. No one really special that we can add. Zamnov we can add. We can add him to the HL, can we? He's from, uh, yeah, we could. Russian player. It's off from a contract. We'll get him in there. Bertuzzi, the center, bottom six potential player. I don't see him coming into the, to the lineup anytime soon there. We're looking pretty good so far. We're looking fairly good. Alright, dude. So, I think for the most part, we are pretty set now. We don't really need anyone exactly to fill any positions because all our positions are filled. Even in the AHL, I feel like the positions are filled in there. So, um... Let's see. We could use, like, a, a growing left winger, though. Petrus Pomo. Wally, wait, what is this guy's name? <laughs> Eric Wally Walterholm. It's hmm. a decent name. I'll give him that. Ollie Likesell. We got some interesting names here, it looks like. And I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. Sven Andrigetto. I'll be honest with you, I'd rather have Sven Andrigetto over Brendan Gantz. Any day, anyways. Let's see if we can offer him a contract. Will he take that? Will he take it? So, Sven Andrew Ghetto. There you go. Now we can trade off Brendan Gaunt for like a draft pick or something like that. Because we do have the position filled. Whatever position he was going to play, anyways. 
There he is, Brendan Gaunt. Let's send him to Boston, why not? Brendan Gaunt's to Boston for a fourth rounder. Nope. Fifth rounder? Can I get a fifth rounder? No. How about a sixth rounder? There you go. So, Brendan Gaunt has been sent off there. And all our positions are filled, so I'm pretty pretty stoked about that. Let's see. What else can we get, though? Is there any, like, upcoming goalies here? No, not really. Nothing good. And then when it comes to all skaters, there's nothing really good here either, to be honest. Lowry. Any young... No, there's Petrus Palmu. And then there's Eric Wally Walterholm. You know what? Screw it. Let's, let's get this guy just because of his name. I like his name. He has a pretty, pretty interesting name. So let's go ahead and sign him. We do have the... The contract space anyways there you go and I think that should be it pretty much not much else I can think of maybe a defenseman but we're gonna keep it as it is so here we are dudes we are at preseason I am gonna set the captains Sedins I think they deserve the captaincy they've been here for a very long time they do deserve captaincy and moment of truth. Where are the Sedins? So we got Patch Ready. Elias Pedersen. Wow. First liner now. Eboli. Horvat. Berchi. We got the two Sedins on the, the third line with Godobin, who's a second liner. No, we, we want to give Godobin that extra ice time. Throw him up there. Lucas Denny. Throw him on the third line. Same with Greenway. We're going to throw him on the third line. Sedins will take on that fourth line with Jake Vertanen. Hopefully they can help him grow into that that, that, that top six player that he he is set to be. So Patch Ready, Besser, I like that. The wrist shot actually is probably a lot better than their slap shot. So we're going to keep him on their respective wings. Gardner and Tanner, that's a pretty good pairing. We got Hutton and Myers here with Eboli, Horvat, and Berchi. Let's switch us to where I'm gonna switch Berchi, I think, out for Godobin. Nah, I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be Berchi. No, 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 actually. Yeah, let's take out. Let's take out Eberle. Let's put Godobin in there. Wait. Switch sides. Patch ready. Besser. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty decent. Horvat with Elias Pedersen. Nah, that's not going to happen. Let's give... Eberle? Nah. Um... Sedin. Let's give Daniel Sedin some extra ice time since he's he's no longer in one of the top positions there. He is on the fourth line now. Lucas Denny. I feel like Lucas Denny should stay there. I really do. This way he has that a chance to learn some defense awareness as a as a playmaker. Yeah, we'll keep him there for now. Him, Eberle, and Greenwheel will take on that third line. Hopefully, Eberle can show him a bit of uh, offensive skills and poise. Gardner, Tanner, Myers, Hutton, Pouliot, and Stetcher. Mott, Andrew Ghetto, and Godette. Let's see. Depth. Masterson. Castles. Let's switch out. Oh, never mind. No, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Never mind. 
I like that Colin right there. I think he'll start growing if I keep him there. Your levy is definitely ready. So let's switch out your levy for Andrew Ghetto or let's see. Or Mott. Yeah, for Mott. Let's switch out. Or no, 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 no. Let's get. Yeah, let's send down Andrew Ghetto for. For your levy there. And then let's put your levy in. Because we do want to give your levy the most ice time that we can give him. So Aho with Biega. Buyaz with Runinen. Grisbois with Shatner. Offensively, Andrew Ghetto will take that. No, I know we'll switch him out. Matthias from. Guess we'll do that. No, where's Colin? Why did Colin get scratched? That doesn't make any sense to me. There you go. Now, what is he good at? He's good offensively, so I think we should switch him out with Samuelson. Let's switch him out with Samuelson. And that's the only extra ice time I'm going to give him, to be honest. Just because he's good offensively, and I feel like he'll do good in that position, and he'll start to grow in that position. I think this is the lineup we're going to go with. I think so. But we may have to put Godobin down if this line doesn't work out here on the second line. But at the moment, I feel like Lucas Denny can learn a lot from Jordan Eberle and turn into that top six role much sooner than later. And I'm looking at my center depth now. It's like we got crazy center depth, and that's what winning is going to be coming from. Like Our goal is to get a really good center depth. And as long as we have that center depth, we can use, typically put almost anyone on the, on the wing, and they'll do good. I don't know, I'm just looking at this lineup, I'm thinking this is a, a very powerful lineup. We're not very good defensively, but we're doing good on the offense. We also have two backup goalies, but I feel like we're going to try to give Demko as much ice time as we can. Hopefully turn him into that, that starting role much sooner than later. But other than that, let's simulate to the regular season. Okay, so when it comes to scouting... I think I'm going to do, for the most part, the WHL. We need more defensive prospects, I think. We need more skaters up front, to be more exact. But I feel like our defense could could use a bit of work. Other than your level, we don't have too much on defense when it comes to growing players. We're going to stop the simulation because I want to I wanna check out the... The draft class for this upcoming year. Do we have any franchise potential players possibly again? I highly doubt it. After Lucas. Or maybe actually we do. Wow. Oh my goodness you guys. This is yet another Vancouver born player. Arthur Glenn. Vancouver Giants. Okay then dude. So. That's a player we're going to have to keep an eye on. Arthur Glenn. And so far, we our players look like they're doing fairly decent. Pacioretty, Berchi, Godolbin. This line doesn't look like they're doing too good other than Lucas Denny. Sedins. They're doing fairly decent. You know what, actually? Let's put a uh, Henrik in. Henrik and Rattanen. Henrik and... Defensively, they'll, they'll probably do better there. Four and four. Lucas Denny. That's what I forgot to do. I gotta remember to, like... Switch this. Switch this kind of stuff. Extra attacker, shootout. Is... How, is, how good is this Deacon? 87 Deacon. I'm putting him in. Lucas Denny. When it comes to Deacon, I think Eberle has 
Brock Besser beat, but Besser has a better shot, so we're going to keep him in there. Well, no, we'll put him in the front. So Besser, Pedersen, Eberle, Pacioretty, and then Lucas Denny in the shootout. And that way Lucas Denny knows that he's one of our, our top prospects when it comes to skill and hands. Now we'll let him know. We gotta keep him on the third line. We don't have to give him penalty kill minutes. I feel like just giving him that third line minutes and also that extra ice time is gonna make him grow. Well, not make him, but will help him grow, I mean. And then I also forgot to switch out Pouliot for Neil Levy. What am I doing? Okay, there you go. Okay, so at the moment, players like Greenway, Godobin, Pedersen, and Besser actually still are growing. Vertanen and Yolevi are, are our main goals. Those are our main prospects that we ought to look at for growth. Other than that, we have a pretty straightforward lineup. Everybody is, looks fairly decent and fairly comfortable with their roles. So we're probably going to get into the simulation right here. Yeah, so other than Marcus Granlund, none of the other trades really I really want to look out for. I mean, Marcus Granlund, he looks like he's he's a pretty decent third liner. And Louis Erickson, we didn't have him for too long, so I'm not too worried about, like, keeping track of him, to be honest. Not a big fan of him anyways. And then Essa Lindell, we only had him for one year. He didn't really work out for the that left side position, so... We're not going to focus on that, just just Columbus Blue Jackets, pretty much. And my main focus is Lucas Denny. So for the first couple of games here, we're going to let... We're going to do some, like, slow time simulation. Well, not exactly slow, but we're going to do a uh, period-by-period simulation for a little bit of October. Okay. Okay, so that's not good for their morale. It's okay though. It's totally fine. Let's make sure that we have Thatcher Demko here in the netminder. In the crease there. So goalies. Yeah, Demko. And we have Elias Pedersen and Besser playing together. This is going to be a crazy line, I feel like. And wow. Brock Besser already has best locker room or chemistry with Max Pacioretty. I'm excited for this lineup right here. I am really excited to see what this line can do. Same with this line right here. Godobin with Horvat and Berchi. That looks like a fairly decent line. Berchi is, is in his prime, so I'm excited to see what he can do with them. Let's go ahead. Let's jump right into it. Simulate. We'll go to goals quickly here. Goals. So the first period, we have Elias Pedersen, who who starts it off for us. He is on the first line and he is only 20 years old now. He should be 21 fairly soon, but he's still only, he's still very young. He's still considered almost a kid, which is crazy. And then Nick Ritchie answers back. He, he fires one from way past the circles. Ben Hutton, he gets a goal. I'm glad I kept him over Essa Lindell. Second period. It's a tie game, but Elias Pedersen managed to get another goal. Can Dem could Demko hold the netminder in this third period? Let's see. Wow, back and forth. This is crazy. Hampers Lindholm. Then Jordan Greenway from that uh, Louis Erickson trade. Besser, he gets a goal. And then Lyson. And then Myers fires one into the back of the net. That's pretty decent. So for the first game, it was a home... No, it was an away game, sorry. 6-5, to five, it's... Our defense isn't very good, but I mean, other than that, our offense seems to be firing away for us. Okay, so now let's simulate up to the next game, and it is a home game, so... Pretty stoked to see what happens in this home game here. Okay. I need to edit my scouting assignment pretty quick here. I'm going to do this first. So another slow simulation because it is a home game. And then we will 
take off on the simulation all the way up to about trade deadline I think so Jake Vertanen he gets a goal against Malcolm Subban there you go there's a goal and then two more goals Jake Gardner and Henrik Sedin for the fourth line they jump in and join the action there third period yet another two goals Max Pacioretty now and Jake Vertanen again so this might be a good year for Jake Vertanen. He is on the fourth line with the Sedins this year. I'm excited to see what he can do. Continue. Awesome. And Pedersen, he's... Wow, he has five points in two games played. Could this be a, a career year for both Pedersen and Bessie now that they have the power forward Max Pacioretty on their left wing there? You never know, to be honest. Okay, let's similar up, up to the first day. The first two games were really good. Our players seem to be doing a good job this year so far. But we lose the next two games. Sebastian Alho to Islanders. I don't see that happening. So there's another win against Tampa. 4 to 2. 2 to 1 win against New York. Buffalo. And then we lose against Toronto. That's a pretty bad loss, but Vancouver seems to just jump back into the into the winning column there after that loss. And they finish off with four wins at the end of October. Wow, this team's looking very good. Very, very good. I'm curious to see what Lucas Denny looks like. Elias Pedersen, he has 14 points in 12 games. That's pretty crazy. Lucas Denny, he did get his first goal. Too bad I couldn't see that in the slow sim, but that's okay. And then Greenway. It's doing very good with uh, Lucas Denny and Jordan Ebley. I feel like this was a very good pickup. He is a power forward, and Lucas Denny does need uh, some sort of uh, strength and durability on, on his wing there. And then Jordan Ebley adds to the, the offense on that line. Second line, how are they doing? They're doing pretty good. Godobin, he he's having a little bit of a tough time, but he's he's hanging in there. Gardner, Tanev, Hutton, he's a plus 10, wow. Holy cow. With Myers, it's pretty insane. Yolevi, he's not doing too good, but it is his first year, so we can't, we can't put too much pressure on the kid. Alrighty, so we're going to start moving things along here a lot quicker. We're going to start doing the simulation month by month. So far, I'm pretty, I'm pretty... I'm pretty happy with the team, how it looks. I know defensively we can work on a couple things. But I'm pretty happy, to be honest, with the team so far. Forward, six weeks. I mean, I really I really wish I could tank for the, the other Vancouver-born player who's set to go first overall. And he is also from Vancouver Giants, which doesn't make sense. They're, like, throwing a lot of Vancouver prospects into this, to this simulation for some reason. I have no idea why. But uh, yeah, uh, as much as I want to do that, we already got Lucas Denny, who is from Vancouver Giants also. He is a sentiment. And I feel like that's all we basically need. Lucas, Lucas Denny, Bo Horvat, and Elias Pettison. And our center depth is set for the next couple of years. Vancouver is going to become a really good team here, I feel like, pretty soon. I mean, they're already a good team as it is. We are currently at 17 9 and 0 this year definitely a contender okay so I'm just checking up on Lucas Denny now and he's already a second line forward that's absolutely insane so we're gonna switch him with Bo Horvat so he can continue his growth we also switch Ebulio with uh, Godolbin here so we have two snipers We'll keep Greenway on the third line with Horvat and Kadolbin. And we'll just bump up, uh, let's see. Offensively, I think Lucas Denny's better. Yeah, 90. 90 overall. Still Lucas Denny in there. We'll keep Bo Horvat on that the penalty kill here. Yeah, he's still in the penalty kill. He's a minus 6 and Sedin's a minus... 
Can we try that out? Minus two, six goals. Let's try this out. Let's give it a try. So these can, can take over that, that other penalty kill minutes right there. And let's continue the simulation. Let's get December over and done with. Lucas Dent, he is turning out to be a success so far. He's already a second line forward at 18 years old. Oh, yeah. Let's switch, actually. Let's actually switch one more, th one more thing here. I forgot about the extra, the extra minutes there. Don't want Lucas Denny and Horvat to lose morale here, so we're going to... Or Lucas Denny, to be exact. Kind of crazy how he's taken over that, that second line pairing already. There you go. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue, continue the simulation. I never thought Bo Horvat would be on the, the third line pairing at this point. I honestly thought he was going to be our first line sentiment for the for years to come but I guess plans change as as you draft and yeah stuff happens so a 3-2 win against New York Rangers a win against Sidney Crosby and the Penguins and switching Lucas Denny up on that that second line pairing has definitely done nothing but good for us except for when we face off against the Capitals we lose another loss there a win against Anaheim Ducks. Okay, let's edit our scouting assignment. Let's go to the QMJHL and let's look for some. Yeah, let's let's look for some goalies. Why not? Essa Lindell back to Vancouver Canucks for Jake Vertanen and Sebastian Ojo. I'm gonna decline that. There's no way that's happening. There's no way we need to bring Essa Lind. But why would they even offer that? What is wrong with? Who was that? Arizona? I don't know who it was. So January 1st, we're at in the Vancouver Canucks. They have 50 points in 39 games played. Edmonton does have a game in hand. So I can see Vancouver becoming a, a Stanley Cup contender this year. I really, I really do believe this team's good enough at that point. I mean, we do have three top line sentiment in Pedersen, Denny, and Horvat, and even Henrik Sedin. He's on the fourth line, but he's a second line forward. All we need to work on really is our, our, de our defense here. And Jake Gardner, he's been doing good on that top pairing with Tanner. Hutton, he's been doing good with Myers, but the only pairing I'm worried about really is Yolevi here and Troy Stetcher. What can we do to to help you levy out here? Okay, well, so we're getting pretty close to trade deadline here, I think. About a month away or so. Well, we've got some time, I guess. We're going to simulate another month ahead, I guess. I like the lineups right now. The lineup pairings. Not going to really do much to change them. Keep them the same at the moment. Oh, here comes a rivalry matchup. Here's Calgary and Vancouver. Eh? Three to two win. That's looking pretty decent. We beat Anaheim. We beat Carolina. So the young guns are definitely taking a step forward. Holy cow! This is a much better team than last year, in my opinion. Very good team. I think trading off the draft picks was a. Uh, Really good idea in my opinion. It was worth it. It was worth it. No, we are not trading for Essa Lindell. It ain't happening. So check it out. So at the moment, Vancouver sits atop the Pacific Division with 66 points. That's pretty good. And Brock Bessie has 45 points. He leads the the scoring here. Wow, Lucas Denny, okay. Um so we gotta make a decision. Do we wanna put Lucas Denny on the first line? I think so. I think so. 
It only makes sense. He's a franchise player, I guess. Might as well put him up there. What is better face off though? Lucas Denny? Yeah. He really made a huge jump. Wow. In his first year, he's already on the first line pairing. Pretty stoked about that. Let's put him also. Well, we won't give him that much ice time just yet. I think the amount of ice time that we gave him is good enough at the moment. So let's go back to the starting page here. So he has 33 points and he's a plus 8. Elias Pedersen, he has 40 points and he's a plus 9. Hmm. I think that's, I think it's good like that. Okay, dude, so I'm going to finish off this simulation here. I'm going to go up to the 26th of February. And that's just, I'm going to leave it off right there pretty much because we're pretty much at trade deadline. We got a lot done this episode. I'm going to leave it up to you guys to, to figure out what I do at trade deadline. If I should trade for a top left defenseman or right sided, it doesn't really matter to me to be honest. But I know we need some help on the defense side, on the defensive side of the the team here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look for some defensemen there. No, I'm gonna decline that to be honest. Want an eight to one win. Decline that trade at the moment. So this team's doing very well, but l not so well lately. Wow, I just noticed that's our first OT loss, it looks like. But we got another OT loss now. Sean Mathias. I'm probably going to decline that. Forty three shootout win against Los Angeles. And a loss and then a win against San Jose. Cool. The team's looking pretty decent. I, I guess I'll check out the the AHL quickly here. Looks like Matthias Frum is leading the scoring down here. Trying to push Della Rose there. Well, Cole Lynn's really, really stepping up his game. I'm going to give him some, a little more extra ice time here. If I can give him that, yeah. Definitely we can. Cole Lynn. Let's put him in right here also. Where is he? Right there. And then maybe some penalty kill minutes? Who's on the penalty kill down here? Castles. We don't need castles in there. No, we don't. Almost said Bob McKenzie for some reason, but that's that's Brett McKenzie. I am not tripping. No, this looks pretty good. I like it. Maybe put uh, let's put from up here. Andrew Ghetto, we'll keep him right there. That looks pretty decent, I guess. Well, I guess I'll check one more thing. Check out his deacon and hands. Not bad. He has pretty decent hands. I, I mean, he can work on it a little bit. Definitely could. I don't think I can. I should put him in the shootout. 81 deacon. Yeah, we'll actually try him on a shootout. Why not? I don't see a reason not to give him a shot there. Just so he just grows faster. He's a low top six player, so the faster we grow him, the the better chance we have to grow him into that top six position there. And you never know, we might need it down the road. But other than that, this episode is pretty 
pretty close to being done here. There's only a couple things I want to check, like the the draft class. Because I really want to know what players are going to be a steal this year. I know, I know he's going first overall, and he's a Vancouver-born player once again. A lot of franchise Vancouver players in this this mode at the moment. Okay, we got a a goalie in the top the top five here. It might be a steal, so we're gonna we're gonna look for goalies in the 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 Swedish area there. Gonna focus my my scouting on that that specific area for goaltenders. Let's see. SHL. Go ahead and do that. There you go. And then I want to look at the, the trade block. Maybe I should take Jake Vertanen off there. Yeah, I think I should. I don't see any reason why I would trade him. He's doing pretty good this year with the Sidians. Wait, is Yolevi ready for top four minutes? If he is, we're gonna, probably going to have to bump him up there. No, not exactly. Does he have better defense than... Yeah, he does actually. Why is he not doing good? I'm confused. Let's go like this. Or no. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see how that works out, I guess. And then uh, let's switch the trading block up pretty quick here. Then take Vertanen off and we'll keep him on there. I mean, he's not really worth much, but at least this way Jake Vertan gains some morale and hopefully does a little better come playoff time. But yeah, other than that, there's not too much else I want to do. Brock Besser obviously is leading the the scoring I, as I expect him to. Future captain. Possibly. That's really up to you guys. That's another thing I want to ask. I don't think Sedins will be back next year, especially with the the ice time that they, that they have gotten this year. So we definitely have to choose a new captain and new uh, assistant captain. I mean, we can make Lucas Denny actually the captain, and then give Besser at least an an assistant captain role, because he seems to be quickly growing into that. That first line position, wow. He has 45 points, he's a plus 16. That's insane. Yes, yeah, so other than that, I'd just like to say thanks for watching, guys. Or thanks for sticking around if you made it this far into the upload. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a comment on what you think and who you think I should make a trade for, which. That just reminds me, let's actually browse the trading block quickly. We'll do this last thing quickly before I, I finish this off. So this is what the trading block kind of looks like. You guys can just kind of pause it. Gordano, he, he kind of looks like a good, a good player to go after, but he is 36 years old. So he's getting up there in age, so I don't... I'm not too sure on that, to be honest. We're not going to go after the S and Lindell and all that. So yeah, this is a trade block pretty much. There's Ryan Sutter, but that's a lot of years on that contract. I don't think we need anything like offensively. I think our players are pretty set on the offensive side. We just need to really bump our, up our defense in order to if we want to make an impact in this playoff this upcoming playoff run that we're going to go on.
So there you have it. There's a there's who's on the trade block and who's available pretty much. Other than that, I'm gonna finish off this upload. Thanks for watching once again. Peace out, dude.